two years ago, my friend Miko told me a story about an archer. His name is Arjuna. Arjuna is the best archer in India. But he was paralyzed by his own power. During the war, Arjuna was not able to shoot because he was afraid if he shoot, he is going to kill his friends and family. During his agony, his best friend and charioteer, Krishna, who happened to be the reincarnation of the universal forces, told Arjuna to just shoot. And he also showed up in his true form to Arjuna. And he said, you just shoot your arrow and let me drive the chariot. So eventually, Arjuna trust and shot the arrow. The war was ended and the peace was restored. I was once the Arjuna. Early in my career, I did this art piece, which eventually became a widely successful culture icon. Some of you might notice and recognize it. It's this artwork, which happened on this social media website called Twitter. During 2008 to 2013, Twitter failed a lot because there's so many users on the platform. So every single time when Twitter is over capacity, people see the image. It is so iconic that it actually started a trend that made all the tech companies around the world started to rethink their user experience and incorporate art into their tech products. Also, around the world, users started to create their own versions of the Twitter whale. From cakes to sculptures, street art to Legos, uh, drinks, as well as fine art. Um, and most importantly, there is somebody in Florida tattooed it on the leg. <laughs> Regardless the wide success, um, I was very early in my career and I had a hard time to navigate the success because, as you know, with great success comes enormous complexity. The complexity that was not the joy um, that I was pursuing in the first place. So um, I wasn't able to create. Um, I was really having a hard time to see if there's any way that I can create anything to top that success. Um, I was frozen. But if you're frozen, you have to let it go, let it go, can't hold it back anymore. As you can see, the very thing that kept me sane was comedy. So I watched hundreds of comedy episodes. Um, and finally, there's this Irish-American Krishna spoken to me via the internet. That person was Conan O'Brien. <laughs> And guess what? It was the first time I actually come across Conan. Um, it was also his last episode on NBC. It was his Tonight Show's goodbye speech. Conan said, nobody gets exactly what they thought they're gonna get in life, but if you work really hard and if you're kind, amazing thing will happen. At that time, streams of tears coming down my face. I knew that was the exact message I needed to hear. So I picked up my bow and arrow. I started to shoot. I was able to create again. I was able to create my art again. Little do I know, eight months later, his team reached out via email and said, Yi Ying, we would love to commission you to do a piece of art to celebrate Conan's new show on TBS. And so, we create the Conan pale whale, because he's very pale and he's riding a whale. <laughs> this is the very testimonial to prove if you work hard and if you're kind, amazing thing indeed happen. Hi, my name is Yi Ying Lu. Yi means happy, Ying means creative, and Lu means land. And you might notice I have a very decentralized accent. I call this the Yi English. Uh, <laughs> This is because I was born in Shanghai, China, and educated in Sydney, Australia, and London, UK. <laughs> I 
I realized that um, one of my purpose is to bridge the gap between art and tech because of the whale. Um, and I was able to connect with the amazing community in here in Silicon Valley, which eventually brought me to San Francisco 10 years ago. And I moved from Sydney, Australia to San Francisco in 2015. Since then, I have shoot many arrows uh, in the inter intersection of art and tech. Uh, one of the arrow actually uh, landed on your phone. That is the story of the dumpling emoji. So I'm going to tell you the story about dumpling emoji. So in 2015, when I moved to San Francisco, I had my friend Jenny A. Lee uh, send me a picture of dumplings. So she's inviting me to her place to have dumplings. And I realized there is no dumpling emoji. How is there no dumpling emoji? And she's like, oh, good point. I'm like, this conversation doesn't go anywhere. Oh, wait a minute. I'm a designer. I can do this. So I create my very first dumpling emoji. I call this the bling bling dumpling because it blings. Um, and then we realized that dumpling is actually very universal. Georgia has kakali, Japan has gyoza, Italy has ravioli, pierogi, empanadas, mentis, momos, and kreplach. <laughs> it's a very global food. It's not just Asian food. It's actually a cross country, and it's a, a world celebrated culture. So we think it's very important to bring the dumpling emoji onto everybody's phone. So Jennifer and a bunch of friends, we started a campaign on Kickstarter to bring emoji, the dumpling emoji, onto everybody's phone. We also realized that in order to get the dumpling emoji on everybody's phone, we need to get the blessing from the Unicode, which is a nonprofit organization based here in Silicon Valley that published all the emojis on people's phone. So Unico came back to us and said, Yi Ying, we love your bling bling dumpling, but as you, as you know, like most of the food are 45 degrees and they don't have faces. And I'm like, why are they 45 degrees? Well, turns out they taste better. So what do you know? <laughs> I eat more dumplings in 45 degrees and I also came up with this revised version of, of the dumpling, and the Unicode was very happy, and they said, you know what, we have a lot of requests. Um, so we, we approve your dumpling emoji, but we also have people want it to have the chopstick, the fortune cookie, and the takeout box. <laughs> At that stage, it's not my job anymore. It's certainly not my career. I'm sure it is my calling. <laughs> so with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, I came up with the whole set, and I sent it to them, and eventually uh, they were available on your phone in 2017, November. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but what's, what's really interesting is that arrow doesn't stop there. It kept flying, and it eventually lent me an opportunity to IDEO Shanghai. Some of you might know IDEO is this global creative consultancy based in Silicon Valley and also around the world. So they have an office in Shanghai. So IDEO Shanghai reached out and said, hey, we would love to invite you to come to Shanghai, China to be our first uh, creative collaborator um, because we believe that you can come and, and do a creative jam with our people. We want you to bring creativity in a workspace. This is actually a very, very new concept. So what I realized is that I'm no longer creating my art on my own in my studio. I'm actually getting a chance to bring more archers or to activate more archers in the field. I get the chance to collaborate and co-create with people in creative space, and that's amazing. So I went to China and Shanghai, which is my hometown, and I met people from around the world. This is actually uh, a colleague from Munich and she taught me about mortician. Um, so what's really interesting is through this opportunity, people started to affect my creative process and vice versa. So one of the colleagues asked me, what's the deal with wonton, the soup dumpling? It is very, very popular in China and also around the world. And I said to myself, I never thought about it. So I started to research and I realized 
Actually, the Chinese word of wantan is literally coming from the same root word, which is also wantan. In Mandarin, they also pronounce pretty much the same, huandun. Um, it literally means the primordial chaos. No joke. <laughs> wantan, the soup dumpling, and primordial chaos, they are related. <laughs> and if you don't get it yet, here's the evidence. In the Ming Dynasty, in the 1300 and 1600, there is this amazing mythical illustrated Bible about mythical creatures called Shanghai Jing. The Chinese name is Shanghai Jing, and the English name is Classic Mountain and Sea. It has an illustrated version of the primordial chaos, and it's called Wantan. And it has six legs, four wings, no face, and apparently good at singing and dancing. <laughs> so if you think about it, it's kind of true because Every single dumpling has its own mystery. You don't know what's inside until you take a bite. It's almost like a Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> Unless you take a bite, you would never find out if it, you know, it's chicken or beef, vegetarian or seafood, right? So, and then you think about it, every single culture has its own form of dumpling. So every single time when you eat a dumpling, Metaphorically, you're opening up a new universe in your mouth. <laughs> and that's a very important message to the humanity because dumpling is almost like a big bang in your mouth. <laughs> and if you think about the word universe, the root word uni means one, one verse. And dumpling is this oneness that really bring all people and all culture together. So that, I need to visualize that message. So I created my dumpling verse. <laughs> and I'm wearing it right now. <laughs> I showed the dumpling verse to the team and uh, they thought it has a lot of possibilities. And I started to create different activities of the dumpling verse. Um, and uh, people are very excited and this is also the, the chance that I started to realize actually we can co-create this together. So I invite the whole team, not only the, uh, the designers, but also the directors, um, the, uh, the lawyers, the accountants, everybody get the chance to actually contribute their ideas uh, of what they want to see the, the dumpling is doing. Um, and it's really amazing to see the endless creativity is coming from people and all people have their own creativity and it's amazing to actually see that on paper and actualize them into animated form. So I took some of um, the, the good suggestions and I animate them into stickers that people can use on social media and also digital platforms. I also made them into prints so that the team can take it and put it in the workspace or family um, in, at home uh, so that they can remember that experience. Thank you. And also through that experience, I realized I never thought um, that I would get these amazing experiences when I started creating the dumpling emoji. So often when you shoot your arrow, um, have not attachment, just really do the work that make your heart sing. Eventually, your arrow is going to land it to miraculous places that you would never imagine. The next few arrows that I've been shooting recently, I wanted to draw all the cities around the world that I have lived or living in right now. This is um, San Francisco. This is Sydney. This is London. What's really interesting is initially I was just drawing these landscapes because I want to express my love and gratitude towards the city. But what's really fascinating is a friend of mine noticed that did you intentionally put bridges in all your artwork? I probably have subconsciously doing that. I didn't actually do it consciously. But then I realized that I'm no longer Arjuna. I'm actually the bridge. I'm not only the bridge between art and tech, I'm also the bridge between work and life, beauty and meaning, and the East and West. I find my meaning through creating. So here is the message that I'd like to spread. Please shoot your arrow. 
whenever you are in doubt, eat more dumplings. <laughs> Ideally, in 45 degrees. <laughs> and your true meaning, your purpose, might just land it on you. Thank you very much.